Are you just getting into Arduino programming and you're like, man, this is so cool. You can see all the potential, but at the same time, you're kind of like, man, there's just so much stuff to learn. I can relate to that. I've been doing this for over a decade and I'm still learning stuff all the time. It's actually a ton of fun, but there are a couple tips I wish I would have known when I started out. In this video, I'm going to share with you three of those tips. And if you want to get the all 10 of them, I got them in this little PDF you can download below. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so here's tip one, and this might sound a little counterintuitive, but I need you to put the brakes on writing code for your project. Like, you know, when you're starting out with this stuff, it's like, man, I just want to write some code, right? But what really helps a ton is if you take some time and just put down on either pencil and paper or maybe even at the top of the Arduino IDE in like a multi-line comment and write out what it is you want your program to do as step-by-step -step as possible. Okay, I call, you know, it's kind of like writing out an algorithm for the program. And the reason why this is so important is because what makes Arduino so much fun is that you can get all these different peripherals and integrate them together, like servos, LEDs, motors, actuators, like sensors, you name it, you can control it with Arduino. But all of those different things, they need to play well together. And so you have to coordinate the code flow correctly. And one way to help you do that is just to have a game plan before you start typing code. Otherwise, it's like you're writing code in like jazz hands and, you know, not nothing against jazz, but all right. So let's just take a simple example. Let's say you've got a button and a servo and an LED and they walk into a bar. No. Okay. So you got a button, a servo and an LED and you want them to do like some coordinated action. Maybe when you press the button, you want the servo to move and then you want the LED to blink. But all of that, all of that action, you need to understand exactly what, what happens when. So do you want the button? Is it just like a press and release? And then the servo moves. How far is the servo moving? Is when you release the button, does the, the servo stop in that position? When does the LED come in? Is it, you know, when is it blinking? When is it off? Like all of those little details are what will get you when you start programming. And so if you have a little, almost like a script, like I said, I kind of call it an algorithm. It, if you have that written out, it becomes the scaffolding upon which you can make a really cool program. Now, one bonus thing that comes into play when you have written out exactly what your program needs to do is that if you feed that to an AI, it's far more likely to be able to give you something that you're going to actually find useful as opposed to just a bunch of code that doesn't even compile. All right. So here's tip two. Remember before when I was saying, man, it can feel overwhelming because there's so much stuff to learn. And yes, programming in general, there's a lot of depth to it, right? But with Arduino, there's really only a handful of Arduino specific functions that if you know them, you're going to be way ahead of the game. All right. It's like, OK, let's say uh, you were teaching somebody how to drive. Right. Well, you'd be telling them when they got in the car, like, OK, this is how you turn the car on. Uh, you know, the gas is on the right. The brake is on the left. I mean, it's nice to know how to turn on the butt warmers. Maybe that is essential. But OK, here are the five functions you should know. You've got three digital functions and two analog functions. So the digital functions, these are going to control the general purpose input output pins or GPIO. And if you look at like the outside of an Arduino board, they got all those pieces of plastic with the holes in them. Those are all, you know, exposing the pins on the microcontroller, right? And the bread and butter of Arduino are these pins. So understanding how to control these pins is really important. And the basic way, you probably know this already, but the basic way that microcontrollers, integrated circuits communicate with the outside world is by changing the voltage at these pins. And the voltage can either be low or it can be high. And the exact voltage there is kind of like an abstraction, right? I mean, there's like this range of voltage that means low, a range of voltage that means high. So in your code, what you're doing is changing the state of those pins, either low or high. It's pretty cool. Now, you can also read voltages with those pins, which is also pretty cool. So all of these functions, these digital and these analog functions, that's kind of what these do. So the digital functions are digital write. That's when you write a pin either high or low. Digital read. That's when you set a pin up 
to read and input, like from a sensor, right? And then you've got pin mode, and that is telling the pin, hey, are you going to be a pin that outputs stuff, or are you going to be a pin that inputs stuff? So those are the digital. Only three functions, but know these things. And when I say know these functions, here's what I mean. So functions are like these black little boxes. Sometimes you have to give them something, and sometimes they'll return you something. They'll give you something back, right? Like you put something in, you get something out. That's not always the case, but sometimes it is, all right? So you've got to know what you have to give the function. Those are the arguments. They're called arguments that you would give the function. And then you need to know, well, okay, what does the function do? And does the function return any values? So when I say know these, that's what I'm saying. Get familiar with them in that regard. All right, so for the analog functions, there's two of them. There's analog write and analog read. Analog write does this cool thing called pulse with modulation. Now, not all the pins on your Arduino board can do it's called PWM but the ones with the little squiggly mark next to the pin number those ones can do PWM so what PWM does is it changes the state of the pin at like a specific timing right so remember before we said if you're if you're using digital write you set a pin either high or low okay well with analog write the pin still goes high and low, but it goes high and then it goes low. Then it goes high, then it goes low. And it, it has this specific timing. It's called a duty cycle. And so the difference between on and off is adjustable. Okay, And so what it gives you is this apparent kind of analog voltage on that pin. So you're not getting an actual continuous analog voltage on the output, but for a lot of applications, it's perfectly fine. Now, analog read has nothing to do with pulse width modulation. What analog read does is it has access to an analog to digital converter that's on the microcontroller. Like microcontrollers are really just a bunch of different tools all kind of stuck together. That's, that's one way of thinking about them. And so a lot of microcontrollers have these things called analog to digital converters or ADCs and the analog read function gives you access to that ADC. Now on most boards you're going to have a little section of pins that's called the analog section and those are the pins that are capable of doing analog read. The pins that do analog read they do not do the analog write. I mean on some boards they might but there are two separate sets of pins that do analog read and analog write. All right but analog read what it can do is let's say you've you're getting a voltage input from some sensor, okay? And maybe the voltage at its highest point is five and at its lowest point is zero, but it can vary, you know what I mean? Like it could be two, could be uh, 3.42, whatever. The voltage can kind of adjust, right? Well, when you use analog read, it will give you a digital number that represents somewhere on that scale. So again, five functions. If you learn these, if you understand these functions, you are gonna be so far ahead of the game. All right, so here's tip three. There is actually a treasure inside the Arduino IDE that I really think is being underutilized by a lot of people who are just getting into Arduino and maybe just getting into programming. So one thing that's very common when you get into programming is that people make these example sketches or example programs to help demonstrate different functionality, different code constructs, like that kind of thing. Okay, so let's just check this out in the Arduino IDE. All right, so if you're in the Arduino IDE and you go up to File, Examples, right here, do you see this huge list of this huge list of code right here, these are all built-in examples that have been written by people who know what they're doing, well, most of the case, know what they're doing, and they exemplify different pieces of code. Remember we were talking about the digital functions and the analog functions? Well, we've got a ton of example digital sketches. Open some of these puppies up and take a look. Wondering about the analog functions? Read this thing. It They might even address specific things you're trying to do with those functions. Like, I don't know, reading a button press, or maybe debouncing a button, or trying to write some code without using the delay function. Like, it's one thing to read the reference. It's another thing to have an example of, let's say, arrays, right? I can pull up this example if I'm trying to write some code for an array, and I can see, like, oh, this is how it's used. And then what I can do, and this can be really helpful, is you can go in and start messing with the program a little bit to see, like, oh, hey, if I change this, does it still work? If I take this out, does it still work? And like I mentioned, I've been writing Arduino code 
code for over a decade, and I still heavily rely on examples. I like to see how somebody else did it before I try implementing it myself. Now, in addition to these built-in examples right here, they'll also very often give you examples for the board that you have selected, right? So right now, in my dropdown here, I've got the Arduino Nano ESP32 selected, okay? And if I go up to File, Examples, you can see there's this whole section of example code specifically for my Arduino Nano ESP32. So it's like, oh, hey, I'm trying to figure out BLE. Wow, look at that. I've got all these examples to try to like look at and understand how this works. I want to figure out how to connect this thing to the web. Oh, look, a whole Wi-Fi part where I have just tons of stuff on like example code, how you can actually make it happen. And again, anytime I'm doing stuff, that's new to me or I haven't done it in a while, like lean into these examples. They're amazing. Now, here's what's also great is in addition to we've got the built in examples, we've got examples specifically for your board. Well, anytime you install a library, almost 99% of the time that library is going to have some example code that's going to walk through like, hey, this is how you use our library. And so did you just, you know, download some whiz bang library? Well, make sure to check out the example code so you can see how they're recommending you use it. There's seven more tips. You can get them. There's a link in the description. You can download this PDF. And also there's a QR code right here. So if you want to get this PDF, you can just scan that. Um, should work, right? And uh, I wanted to say, if you're going to learn those functions, I talked about those digital and analog functions, you want to check out the Arduino reference. You can go and watch this video. It's going to talk all about how to use the Arduino reference. And that is going to be your tool for like programming with Arduino. It's it's something you're always going to be going to. It doesn't matter how experienced you are. You're always going to be kind of like checking in on that Arduino reference to make sure like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm using this function correctly or what's going on, you know? So this video right here will get you all set up with that.